Hello everyone, my name is Abhiral Kumar and today I'll be talking about how to leverage unlabeled data in offline reinforcement learning. This is joint work with Tian Heyu, Yevgen Shepotar, Carol Hausman, Chelsea Fenn and Sergey Levin. So in contrast to standard online reinforcement learning, offline RL methods aim to learn from a static data set of previously collected experience with no additional environment interaction. This is quite good because it avoids the need for any unsafe active data collection and it can utilize existing data sets to learn effective policies. Furthermore, offline RL can potentially fulfill the generalization promise by allowing us to train on lots of diverse datasets which are already existing out there without needing to collect these datasets from scratch ourselves. So while this abstract picture for offline RL seems quite reasonable and a good starting point, the actual picture is a bit more nuanced. Often at times, the datasets that are available to us for learning are typically organized as a big general purpose dataset that depict an agent doing multiple tasks in multiple scenarios and include data from many other agents such as humans ourselves and we are provided with a much smaller task-specific dataset that we need to learn from. One of the key properties of this big general purpose dataset is that it often does not come annotated with any kind of rewards. So the big question that this raises is how can we actually apply offline RL with, when we are not provided with reward annotations since reinforcement learning methods are quite dependent on rewards to learn any meaningful behavior. And this is precisely the setting that we want to study in this paper. So first step solution towards this problem of leveraging unlabeled data would perhaps just be to simply train a model of the reward function from the limited label data that we have and treat it as ground truth for then running offline RL. How does this approach actually perform? So we, we evaluate this reward learning approach on some robotic manipulation and navigation benchmark tasks. And in this table, we present our results. So we compare reward learning uh, shown in red to uh, an Oracle approach that actually has access to the true reward function that, that we are training with, as well as a method that simply discards all of the unlabeled data for learning and only trains on the task specific data uh, shown as no sharing. Observe that in several cases, reward prediction can actually be much worse than no sharing, which discards all of the unlabeled data, which is quite surprising and alarming at the same time. And we suspect that this is probably because the error induced in the reward model uh, can then get exploited when, run, when running RL on it when, when you're trying to optimize this reward function. So the natural question that arises is, can we actually devise a way to leverage unlabeled data to learn a better offline RL policy without uh, suffering from this problem of reward exploitation? Okay, so in this work, we introduce unlabeled data sharing or UDS for short, which is an extremely simple method that solves that aims to solve the exploitation problem. So UDS simply labels the unlabeled data set with a reward of zero or the minimal possible reward of the RL problem. So this is quite in contrast to the reward prediction methods that are trying to infer the correct reward for that transition. UDS simply says, I label them with a zero or the minimal possible reward, which is a very simple, a very, very nice strategy. So why can this nice strategy even work in the first place? So perhaps the main reason why such a strategy can, can work is because it alleviates the chances of any form of reward exploitation, which can, uh, which can lead to quite bad performance for offline RL methods. And at the same time, it does actually increase coverage and it allows us to train on a lot more data because it allows us to leverage the unlabeled data, which can be a quite, a, quite, a, quite a big plus. Since offline RL algorithms are already pessimistic or conservative in some way, and since UDS is only making them slightly more conservative, perhaps it shouldn't be as bad because, uh, because in offline RL, we know that being conservative is a good thing. Furthermore, we also theoretically show that in, there are several cases where UDS shouldn't actually hurt. For example, in the case when the unlabeled data is identically distributed as the labeled data set, uh, in this case, uh, UDS would only end up scaling up the reward function effectively and it shouldn't affect the learned policy, and so it can be quite a big plus. We find that in, uh, empirically in the paper, we show that there are many cases where UDS uh, can still quite work in practice, but there is a natural question. UDS does induce a lot of reward bias. So can we actually do better than this knife strategy somehow? So the main issue with UDS was that it induced this reward bias problem, which potentially can outweigh the benefits of coverage and having more data. So to offset this reward bias, our key insight was that we can, we can still keep doing UDS, the very simple approach, but we can simply reweight the transitions in the unlabeled data set to, to somehow um, reduce the impact of this reward bias. So note that we're still retaining all of the unlabeled data and we're still training on it, but we're simply downweighting transitions, which would uh, in some sense contribute to more reward bias. And to do so, we find an optimized weighting scheme, which requires us to balance reward bias, distribution of shift, and sampling error in order to obtain the best performance. And turns out that uh, an approach called conservative data sharing, or CDS in short, from our prior work at MUREPS last year, can basically be an effective tool to, to solve this problem. And what does CDS do? It would simply prioritize transitions based on the learned conservative Q-value of the algorithm, and more details are there in the paper. Okay, so let's move to some empirical results now. So the first set of experiments, we compare the performance of UDS and CDS plus UDS on two uh, uh, robotic manipulation and navigation tasks in a multitask setting. In this case, we are comparing uh, these methods to reward learning methods from online reinforcement learning, WISE and RCE, um, the reward prediction method that we discussed earlier, uh, methods that actually are multitask R methods with Oracle reward information, as well as no sharing, which simply discards all of the unlabeled data. So note that UDS, uh, utilizing even this naive UDS approach is actually quite a, quite a few times better than simply discarding all of the unlabeled data or utilizing reward, predict, uh, reward prediction. 
Also note that CDS plus UDS specifically increases the performance of UDS on tasks where there's more reward bias, which is quite encouraging. Especially note that, for instance, in the door open task where there's lots of data and less reward bias, UDS and CDS plus UDS are pretty comparable to each other, whereas reward learning is really bad. Whereas on the task where, uh, where there's more reward bias, such as door close, UDS is much worse compared to reward prediction, but CDS plus UDS can actually improve the performance of UDS quite a bit, which is quite, in uh, quite interesting. We also evaluate on multitask offline reinforcement learning problems where the agent must learn from raw visual observation at a much larger scale, many more tasks in this problem. Again, we compare to um, multitask RN methods which utilize Oracle reward information and find that actually CDS plus UDS and UDS perform quite comparably to these, to these, Oracle, uh, to, to these multitask methods with Oracle reward information. This is quite exciting because all that this says is that we can actually leverage unlabeled data quite efficiently with, with CDS plus UDS and UDS methods such that we can ex uh, learn, we can get away without actually uh, even labeling the whole unlabeled data set, which can be quite tricky in practice in practical robotic settings. So to summarize, um, unlabeled, we show that unlabeled data can be leveraged by simply labeling it with the, with the minimal possible reward of the RL problem, which is quite encouraging, quite simple to use in practice. We also showed that uh, by adding a simple weighting scheme such as, the, such as using the CDS approach to offset the reward bias can be quite effective. We hope that this provides a natural starting point for actually starting to scale up offline RL methods to more diverse and heterogeneous data sets where we don't have reward annotations as well as a, a huge amount of data which can actually be useful but we don't know how to use it. Thank you so much for listening. Please check out our paper and our previous CDS paper for more details and please uh, come to our poster for, for learning more about it. Thank you so much.